Hello, in this video we're going to discuss the axiom of determinacy. So first, you might ask, why would you want to study the axiom of determinacy? Well, in this video I will give two reasons why the axiom of determinacy is important. First, axioms in general are important because they are the assumptions we make, from which we logically derive our results in maths. If we had different assumptions, then we could end up with different results. To emphasise the importance of axioms, I will give an analogy of their role in maths. Axioms can be likened to types of puzzle pieces. Just like there are only certain ways to combine puzzle pieces, we can only combine axioms if it's logically valid to do so. And the resulting logical combination of axioms constitutes the proof of a mathematical result, whether that result is a calculation, theorem, or something similar. And just as we might be interested in what shapes we can make just using copies of these two puzzle pieces, we might want to study what we can and cannot prove using just these two axioms. In particular, the axiom of determinacy is an assumption about sets. Normally, when we prove properties about sets, we don't assume the axiom of determinacy. Instead, we assume the properties that come from the set theory called ZFC, which has these assumptions. But one of these assumptions, namely the axiom of choice, is somewhat controversial which provides one reason to discuss an alteration to ZFC called ZF plus AD, which has the same assumptions as ZFC, except we replace the axiom of choice with the axiom of determinacy. Because they make different assumptions, we can prove different properties about sets in ZFC and ZF plus AD. In particular, in ZF plus AD, all sets of a certain type have properties called regularity properties. And these regularity properties might be thought of as desirable properties. But before we can discuss these regularity properties, we need to actually define the axiom of determinacy, which means we need to talk about a certain type of game. In this type of game, there are two players who we will call Alice and Bob. And each player makes a move from a fixed set of moves. In particular, we will call the set of moves for Alice, capital A, and for Bob, capital B. In this type of game, Alice always makes the first move. Then Bob makes his move, and the players keep alternating making moves until they have made an infinite number of moves one for each natural number. So we will use this shorthand to denote their infinite sequence of moves using angled brackets. And we use these infinite sequences to define plays, where a play is the pair of Alice's and Bob's infinite sequence of moves. And we use a to the omega times b to the omega to represent the set of all plays where a to the omega and b to the omega represent the set of all countably infinite sequences of elements in a and b, respectively. Using these ideas, we can describe the notation for a general game of our type, which is g a b of x, where the g just represents that it is a game of our type, and as before, a and B represent the set of moves Alice and Bob can make, respectively. But the X represents how to win the game. In particular, X is the set of plays that Alice wins. And Bob wins all the other plays. So, in this game, there is no way to draw. Like for games in everyday life, Alice and Bob can play according to a strategy, which dictates how to respond to the other player's previous moves. In particular, we will call a strategy for Alice, Bold A. 
Because Alice goes first, her strategy must determine her first move based on no moves from Bob, which we represent here using a capital lambda. And then Alice's strategy must determine her moves based on Bob's previous moves, until she is given an infinite sequence of moves. And we represent such an infinite sequence as A of the infinite sequence of Bob's moves. Similarly, we will use a bold B to represent a strategy for Bob. And as before, Bob's strategy gives the infinite sequence of moves based on Alice's previous moves. And we represent such an infinite sequence as B of the infinite sequence of Bob's moves. Now, when we play games, we want to win. So we want to know a winning strategy, which is the strategy that ensures we win regardless of the moves of the other player. In particular, for a general game of our type, a strategy for Alice is winning if every play is in X, when Alice makes moves according to her strategy. And a strategy for Bob is winning if every play is not in X when Bob plays according to the strategy. Using winning strategies, we can define what the determinacy relates to in the axiom of determinacy. And we do this by defining a determined game, which is a game for which either Alice or Bob has a winning strategy. Hence, winning strategies can be thought of as defining unfair games where one of the players has an advantage over the other. So now we can define the axiom of determinacy, which is the assumption that if A and B are countable sets, then every game using those moves is determined, regardless of the set X. Having now defined the axiom of determinacy, we can give one of its nice consequences. But to do this, we need to define a perfect set, which is a non-empty set of plays such that its elements are the plays where for every natural number n there is a different play which shares the same first n moves of Alice and Bob. This can be thought of as saying that for each play in the perfect set there is an arbitrarily similar but different play also in the set. And the perfect sets allow us to define the regularity property called the perfect set property which is when a set is either countable or it contains a subset that is a perfect set. And the axiom of determinacy implies that if A and B are countable, then every set of plays has the perfect set property. And this is a desirable consequence because of its relation to a statement about sets called the continuum hypothesis. In particular, this consequence of the axiom of determinacy can be used to show that there is no set with cardinality strictly between that of the natural numbers and that of the real numbers. And this nice result in ZF plus AD is important because this result does not hold in ZFC. In fact, in ZFC, we cannot prove whether or not such a set exists. And thus overall, we have given a possible advantage of ZF plus AD over the more popular ZFC. So now I will summarize some of the main points of this video. First, an axiom is an assumption. And next, a determined game is a game where one of the players can ensure that they win. And the axiom of determinacy is the assumption that every game is determined if Alice and Bob can only make moves from a fixed countable set. And this assumption can be used to show that if Alice and Bob can only make moves from those fixed countable sets, then every set of plays has the perfect set property. So, as ever, thank you for watching.